I'm very excited about um, doing this video to explain to all of the audience about oral health and how you can improve your and maintain oral hygiene and the importance of maintaining oral hygiene throughout life. Um, just a little bit of a history about myself. So I'm a chemist by training. I um, got, received my graduate degree from Princeton University using a technique called resonance Raman spectroscopy. Um, as kids, I had, and as an adult in high, and as a kid in high school, I'd never heard of the word. Even as an undergraduate, I had never heard of the term. But essentially, it's measuring the structure of protein. So it's a technique used to measure the structure of any kind of a molecule for me was proteins and using um, information about how different um, chemical chemical bonds within the protein vibrate. So it's a vibrational technique and every, every chemical bond has a vibrational signature. And by knowing the vibrational signature, you can say something about the structure of a compound. So I did that as a, as a graduate student and then I moved on and I was lucky to be hired by Colgate Palmolive company and I've been working for Colgate Pomala for the last 27 odd years. Um, I worked um, in um, their skin department and I've worked currently in their well, and I worked in their oil department and now I'm in the clinical research department and in the clinical research department I have projects related to oral health and I work with a partner on projects related to skin health as well. So that kind of um, brought me to the realization that perhaps this talk, I should talk about um, how people should maintain um, good oral health. And because we're now in the midst of this coronavirus, I'll give a little spiel about the importance of hand washing and the importance of maintaining good skin health. So I'll start with that. Um, so I think um, the audience is um, probably um, maybe elementary to middle school to high school. So we might have a broad audience that I'm talking to, but I think the basic communication is the skin is the largest organ of your body. I think when I was in school, I never really thought about the skin as an organ, but not only is it an organ, it's the largest organ uh, uh, of your body. And it, the most important role of the skin is to protect you. So it's the outermost protection layer and it prevents chemicals and microorganisms from entering. So um, why is that important? It, the topmost layer of your skin is uh, it's called the stratum corneum. It's actually a non-living layer. It's a non-living layer of tissue. But it's organized in a way that if you put your skin or you put your, your hands are always touching something, most of the things that your hands touch, they don't penetrate the skin. They just kind of stay on the outer surface. There are some things that penetrate, but the only way they penetrate is if the barrier or the topmost part of the skin is compromised. And when that happens by washing your hands too much without moisturizing them afterwards or by getting burns, um, then those foreign agents can enter the skin and cause harm. So the reason um, now um, that a lot of, from the public health perspective, and, and always you're told to wash your hands and wash your hands at, after you use the bathroom, wash your hands before eating, is because there are things that will adhere to your skin and the only way they can get into your body is through open areas. So your mouth, your nose, your eyes, those are all areas that don't have this protective physical barrier. And if your hands touch those, then things on your hands can enter the body. The good thing is that those areas, your, your mouth, your your nose, your, 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 your eyes, they do have mucous membranes and those membranes do have enzymes that can help degrade bacteria, viruses that come in, but you don't really want to exercise that second layer of protection if you don't have to. So the best is to wash your hands, wash your hands before you eat, wash your hands when you come into the house, wash your hands after leaving the bathroom. So you can, the soap basically breaks down the membrane of microorganisms and it, it dis destroys their function. So that's why you're asked to wash your hands. Alcohol does the same thing. You have to have a certain level of alcohol. So that's why 
um, when they talk about hand sanitizers, those are formulated with the right level of alcohol to kill um, the microorganisms. One last thing, I was at a conference and um, um, the presenter at the conference was talking about the fourth layer of the, so the skin is three layers. It's the topmost layer, the stratum corneum, then you have the epidermis, which is the second living layer, and then you have um, the, the, the dermis, which has, contains the collagen and the blood vessels and the sweat glands and all that. He was talking about a fourth layer, and he was talking about this is actually the topmost layer of the skin. And the fourth layer actually contains um, receptors for um, microorganisms. And so when you damage your skin, you release um, small um, molecules, small peptides, small pieces of protein. And these are called antimicrobial peptides. They're small pieces of protein. And that is your, your real first line of defense that is not, a, not like a physical barrier to, to, to destroy that bacteria. So his demo that he did was he, put on gloves on one hand, and one of his hands was left ungloved. And then he put both hands in bacteria, and then he put um, the gloved hand in bacteria, he put the ungloved hand in bacteria, and then he put both hands on what we call an agar plate. And an agar plate contains nutrients that allow that bacteria to grow. And what he wanted to, to demonstrate is that he put the bacteria on the hands and he, he, he let the bacteria stay on the hands for a period of time. And what he wanted to demonstrate was the power of these antimicrobial peptides. So on the gloved hands, once the bacteria was allowed to grow on this agar plate, you saw a nice handprint of bacteria, basically. But on the ungloved hand, you had a much smaller um, growth of bacteria on the handprint. And what he was trying to demonstrate was the power of that fourth layer of protection that your skin maintains that a gloved hand does not maintain. So, you know, a lot of people are walking around wearing gloves. When you're wearing gloves and you're still touching things with your gloves, you're still <coughs> passing on things to whatever you touch. So don't, don't, feel overprotected by having gloves. It's still important once you remove the gloves to wash your hands um, and um, because the glove does not really maintain that fourth layer of protection that your skin does. Okay, so that's my skin um, um, hand washing communication. And I guess um, if I am always open for follow-up questions after this video, uh, if someone has one. Has, has one. So now I'm going to switch over to what my current research has been on for the past 10, 10 years. So I completed some basic research in the oral health field looking at um, why so many people get caries, why so much of the population, the global population, has gingival inflammation which means that they bleed either when they brush their teeth or when they floss their teeth, there's blood in the sink, what causes that? And right now my current role is designing clinical studies to evaluate technologies and develop, to develop methods to test and to evaluate um, these clinical disease states. So we're gonna start with the importance of oral hygiene. So a lot of people, um, uh, a lot of health professionals, even when they when they think about cleaning uh, or when they think about health states, not a lot of attention is paid is paid to oral health. So you're asked to brush your teeth twice a day. And you're asked to brush your teeth for two minutes twice a day, and the reason that you're asked to brush your teeth uh, for two minutes twice a day is in your mouth. Your mouth is loaded with microorganisms, mainly bacteria. And your saliva has these antimicrobial peptides that help control the load of these bacteria. Also in your saliva, there are proteins and the proteins uh, are very, very, very big structures, um, but they are coils, so they don't look so big, but they, they, they are produced by the body and they adhere to your teeth. And because the proteins adhere to your teeth, they have receptors 
that allow the bacteria to, he to adhere to your teeth. So 20% of your mouth is made up of your teeth, 80% of your mouth is made up of your soft tissue, your, your gums, your cheeks, your, 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 um, your palate. Bacteria is also adhering um, to these surfaces, but these surfaces are living surfaces and they're always sloughing off. So they're always growing and they're always releasing the bacteria. So again, the only way the bacteria can get in is by swallowing and that does happen. And I'll talk about it when someone goes to the doctor, to the hospital, and they need to have a respirator in, and they need to put a tube down the, the throat. Um, as long as the bacteria is in a place where it's supposed to be, that bacteria causes no harm. But sometimes during the process of intubating and putting that tube down the throat, you're pushing bacteria down the throat that is not normally down the throat, and that can add to the negative effects of someone getting pneumonia or something like that. So a lot of times, um, if, if the hospital has the opportunity, they'll wash the, the mouth with a, a, a rinse called chlorhexidine, which kills those bacteria that can cause the problem. So the reason why you brush twice a day, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to get back to that. So the bacteria that's on your teeth, your teeth are not living. They don't shed. They don't um, slough off. Once they're there, if you, if you damage your tooth structure, it cannot be regrown. So you have to remove that bacteria. And so you have to remove it mechanically. And if you don't remove it mechanically, those bacteria start producing, um, again, small molecules that are seen by the body as foreign. And those small molecules, because they're seen by the body as foreign, the body wants to attack them. And so the body starts responding to those small molecules and they start damaging your tissue in the underlying structure. So if you don't remove that bacteria by brushing twice a day, it leads to other problems. So the first problem I'll talk to affects 99% of the global population of adults. And that, and that disease is getting cavities. So cavities, we always think about as a childhood disease. And when I was growing up, um, and we all know that we have our primary teeth and our permanent teeth. When I was growing up, my parents really didn't care about my primary teeth because they knew that I was gonna lose them and that um, they were more, more concerned about what happens when my uh, permanent teeth came in. The new knowledge is, that from birth, from when the, I'll say from six months, let's just say, from when the first tooth really starts erupting, that's when you really should pay attention to start taking care of your teeth. And it's all because of the biofilm, the bacteria that starts adhering on the tooth at that age. So that bacteria comes from your saliva, but it's, it's modulated by what you eat. So, if you eat a lot of sugar or starches or carbohydrates and you don't get rid of the you don't get rid of that bacteria by cleaning it off your tooth, that bacteria is, is gonna become what we call pathogenic. And the and the metabolites or 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 the chemicals that, that bacteria produces, they're gonna be acidic. So very low pH chemicals. So so acid acids that you might find in um, like your orange juice or your lemon uh, lemons or or sodas they all are low ph they all are acidic so this bacteria starts producing very acidic molecules and your tooth dissolves in the presence of acidic molecules and Although you can regain, get your permit, your, you, although you're gonna lose your primary teeth and you're gonna get some permanent teeth, your primary teeth are more susceptible to this damage. And eventually you're gonna get two things could happen. You either don't remove the bacteria and you have very localized, a very localized acidic effect where you get a cavity. And if you get a cavity, you have to go to the dentist and the only way they can treat that cavity is to two things, put a filling in it or pull it. So if you pull it, that's fine. You pull your primary tooth, you're gonna get a new tooth out, but your environment that caused that cavity is still there. 
those bacteria that you have now, your mouth has now, is now, that has in it because of the diet that the person has, that still remains. So as that permanent tooth is growing in, that collection of bacteria that was there because of the diet is still there, is gonna adhere on that growing permanent tooth and cause the same problem. So right now, the only way around um, preventing that from happening is to clean effectively. So it's to really um, make sure that you're brushing twice a day and it's brushing to clean. So you brush the outside, the teeth on the outside, and you go behind the teeth and you brush inside, you know, behind the teeth, those, those teeth near the tongue. Um, and you really try to remove um, all the plaque. So the, so the bacteria or the biofilm is called plaque. You really are trying to remove that plaque from, from your tooth, teeth by brushing. We have um, now some brushes that are now on the market that can tell you how well you're brushing. They can show you where you are not spending enough time in certain locations to brush to help with that process. So that's one negative impact of not brushing twice a day your teeth well, is that you're gonna get biofilm on your teeth, you're gonna get plaque on your teeth. If you eat carbohydrates, starches, sugars, you're gonna start, the bacteria is gonna start creating these acids that decay your teeth, that demineralize, and you'll need a carrier, you'll need a cavity filling, or you need a um, tooth, tooth pulled. The second thing that also is affecting 99 uh, in a lot of populations, 99% of, uh, of the population is what I spoke of earlier, which was gingival inflammation. So again, it's because of the biofilm that's on your tooth, but the biofilm that causes the inflammation, is the bio, this biofilm is on the part of your tooth closest to your gum line. And because it's touching a living tissue, when it again produces these metabolites or produces these chemicals, um, the chemicals don't necessarily have to be acidic chemicals to cause this inflammation. They're actually toxins. They're actually bacterial toxins that bind to receptors on your tissue that turn on in inflammatory events. So when I talk about in turn, turning on inflammatory events, what do I mean? So when um, your, your body sees things that are foreign to the body, um, your body has ways to protect itself. And one of the first ways the body has to protect itself, it is it increases the blood flow to that site, site where it sees the foreign invader. And it, and it, it increases the blood flow to that site. And one side effect sometimes is that you get a you get a fever because the fever is the body's response of heating up the body so that that foreign invader can die, because a lot of foreign invaders can't take high temperatures. Another thing that happens is the blood vessels that are taking that blood to the side of the in, in, invader is it becomes leaky. It's it's able to start trans things that are inside the blood vessel. Keep going. Yeah, things that are inside the blood vessel kind of starts leaking out, and these are white um, white blood white blood cells. And these um, white blood cells, part of their function is to engulf and destroy and remove that foreign body that's there. That's, the, that's a natural um, body response. However, sometimes our natural body response goes haywire. Um, when we don't, when we're doing things repeatedly and we don't remove the insult. It's, it's, that's what we call kind of chronic inflammation. And, and when you have gingival inflammation, if your body hyper responds over time, what happens is not only does your tissue start to bleed, so as you brush, you might see blood in the sink. That is not because your brush is too hard, you're brushing wrong, you're doing something, you're doing something wrong. Bleeding is not because of anything related to brushing. Bleeding is because your skin is now, the tissue is now inflamed and it's more prone to leaking out that blood that's in, within the lower part in the blood vessels because it's damaged. And so one remedy to that is to remove the problem 
which is to remove the biofilm. So a lot of times it's just more effective, more effective cleaning. So what you might have seen as you clean better within a day or two, you don't see the bleeding anymore. That means everything has repaired itself, everything's back to normal, you're okay. The key sometimes is just to find the site where the bleeding is occurring. And you might do that by flossing. And so a lot of times when you floss, you'll see some sites that are bleeding more than normal. And so that, that's how you know what, what to work on more, right? Um, however, there, there's a point where um, the gingival inflammation is not reversible. And the point at which the gingival inflammation is not reversible is when the body starts destroying its own tissue. And once the body starts destroying it, the, its own gingival tissue, gen, that gingival inflammation process transitions, transitions into another term that's called periodontitis. And periodontitis leads to bone loss um, up, around the tooth structure, and it leads to your tooth becoming very loose. And eventually the dentist will decide that he can't save that tooth anymore. Um, by any, um, what they do, scaling and root planning or putting antibiotic in the pocket to kill off the bacteria or to do some kind of um, 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 uh, re rege regenerative therapy. The dentist might decide he can't do that or the patient might decide they don't want to go through that. And, and so the tooth becomes so loose it has to be pulled. It can't be saved. So that's another way of losing a tooth. You can lose a tooth. Um, through, through the caries process because there's so much decay and it, it gets into your root and, and you might not want to go to an endodontics to get a root canal to destroy all the, all the nerves within the tooth. All the, basically, you're destroying the tissue, the, the tissue itself. And so they pull it. And then the other, uh, the other way is you just totally you lose the bone structure because of period, period and titus and, and you pull it. And so, so these are two effects of not brushing your teeth well. So you, some of you guys are really young and you don't feel, definitely you, you might have experienced cavities. You probably are too young so far to have experienced anything to do with irreversible gingival inflammation, so the periodontitis. But if I will say from personal experience, after college, I was not taking care of my teeth well. And by 2022, I did have to get a tooth pulled because of gingival inflammation that had led to bone loss um, in one of my back molars. So just keep it front of mind. You, you really want to um, have good oral hygiene. Um, the, other, the other point that's also being, a lot of research is going on now, some of you might have family members that have um, chronic inflammation. So they might have diabetes or they might have some heart, heart, heart health um, issues. It's very important for them to maintain their oral health because there's definitely an association between maintaining good oral health and controlling um, um, your diabetes and reducing your risk of having another heart event. So, and then, the, and then the third piece is oral health is now being linked to, to Alzheimer's and mental health. Um, they're still trying to understand, researchers are still trying to understand how, how oral health is connected to Alzheimer's and, and mental health, but they have seen associations between the two. And then for when you're adult and you're, uh, for the females on the call, when you are pregnant, it is also an association between good oral health and the, the, the pre, premature birth of babies. So there's, there's been good correlation that maternal health is affected to uh, preterm babies and the, uh, the number of preterm babies delivered. Um, and then I think I'm gonna end um, on the cos cosmetic side of maintaining good oral health. So I've talked a lot about more the health side, but there's a cosmetic benefit of maintaining good oral health. Um, and one of them is just good breath odor. So 
on the tongue, there are also these bacteria, these, these, these uh, biofilm that adhere to the tongue surface. And if you get too much of a load of these bacteria, they also metabolize, they also eat things. And what they produce are low volatile odiserous compounds, which, which affect the smell, people's odor, people's mouth odor. So when you get up in the morning, you wake up in the morning, you probably have what we term morning mouth here. Mouth feels sticky, it pro it's probably smelling, and, and it, doesn't, it doesn't feel right. And some people, they'll either brush immediately or they'll eat and then brush. Now, so people have different, uh, different habits. But anyway, the, uh, you might wonder, why does my mouth smell? And why, why does it feel sticky? So one of the, the what, what the body does when you sleep, because essentially, I guess it was built into the system that to prevent choking, your salivary rate dec decreases. So how much saliva you produce in your mouth when you sleep is much lower. And so saliva has very important benefits. Saliva has um, minerals. There are minerals in saliva that help what we call remineralize the teeth. So when you when you do, when you slightly dissolve the teeth, there are minerals that are in your saliva that you can use to put it back naturally. It comes back. Saliva also has these antimicrobial peptides that control the level of bacteria in your mouth. And so when you have that reduced saliva flow, you reduce all of that, and that is what makes your mouth not only smell bad but feel bad um, in the morning because you have much more bacteria growth overnight. Um, that's not being controlled by the saliva flow. So brushing your teeth and your tongue will help control um, malodor again twice a day. And then the last thing cosmetically is for those that drink coffee or drink tea or like grape juice or when you get older, drink wine, all those have staining um, um, chem chemicals, materials in them. And those, those, uh, th those materials can adhere to your teeth and cause stains. And so um, because in your toothpaste, you have some abrasive materials, because your brush is a little bit abrasive because it's trying to remove the, the, the biofilm, um, you can remove those stains that are adhering on the surface of the tooth by brushing. When you go to the dentist and you get a cleaning, um, the cleaning that they are, the cleaning that they give to you is called a profi. That's why your teeth feel so good after the cleaning is because they are polishing your teeth and they're removing all those surface stains and they're removing all the biofilm so that you come out feeling, your teeth feeling really smooth and your mouth feeling really fresh. And that's the purpose of that cleaning. And I think, I think that is, I've tried to cover the importance of good oral health. Um, in the beginning, I tried to cover the importance of hand washing and why you're asked to wash your hands so frequently in the day to, av to avoid infecting the body. Um, and I will open myself up to receiving questions from, from Deborah um, at any time. Hi, um, may I ask a question? Sure. Um, is there a certain type of toothpaste that I should use? So, yes. Use a toothpaste that contains fluoride. I know there's a lot of toothpaste out there now that are, are natural and they can be used if your only purpose is to control the biofilm that causes the gingival inflammation. But they have no protection in them or if you eat a lot of sugar, if you eat starch, they will not protect you from getting cavities. So, and, oh, sorry. yeah, so, I mean, I can say we, we sell these non-fluoride toothpaste, but we never say it's So if, you're, if you, are, you want to protect yourself from getting cavities, you have to use a toothpaste that contains fluoride. And then also, is, should I use like, a, is, it, is an electrical brush better than a, a normal one? So it's, a, a, it's all about how easy it is to remove. So if you are a good brusher, a mechanical brush is just as good as an electrical brush. 
But what, what we found is that people that use electrical brushes, they are much more proficient in removing the, the, the biofilm. So if you, and also the electrical brushes now, they're, they're guided and connected to show you what areas you haven't, you haven't brushed in. So for that purpose, I would say yes. The electrical is better, but if you're a good brusher, the mechanical will do just. And, and what does what does mouthwash do? Like, what, so, what's the? Yeah, <laughs> so mouthwashes. So they they serve two purposes. So some mouthwashes they just have a nice flavor in them, and so some people just want to use it after they brush. So you have to so you 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 can't use a mouthwash by itself. So mouthwashes by themselves. Um, uh, are, is not recommended. So I, there are actually three types of mouthwashes. So sorry. So the one just has a nice flavor. So you brush, you rinse with a mouthwash. It doesn't have any actives. It just has a nice flavor, and it's just used to freshen your your breath. And sometimes the flavor lasts so long that you feel like you have fresh breath for an extended period of time. Some some mouth rinses um, that are over the counter they also have antimicrobials in them. Um, and they are used so that to extend extend the lifetime of the benefit of the machine, basically, because they might deposit something on your on your gingival tissue or on your tooth to to prevent the growth of the biofilm, right? So it might extend that protection a little longer. And then the third, right, thank you. The, those are the third, and this yeah. is what the dentist sometimes uses. It's called chlorhexidine, it, it, which is a much more powerful anti um, antimicrobial for the same purpose to reduce the bacterial load oh so that one's like a better, better quality it has a it has a more effective longer term um, antimicrobial in it but they only prescribe it for a limited time um, because it stains one is because it stains and two uh, something I didn't I didn't share you know you just need to maintain a good load of bacteria in your mouth. You don't want to kill it off because once you kill off um, a significant amount of the bacteria, then you're opening yourself up for other microorganisms to grow, fungi or some viruses. So the bacteria kind of maintains the, the balance so that other microorganisms that you might not want there to, so they, they won't get 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 space to grow within your mouth so that's another reason why using some of these powerful antibacts for long periods of time are not recommended all right thank you for that information yeah no problem thank you uh -huh. you're welcome any other questions um actually oh yeah is, is it like what is what does flossing do like aside from like yeah. it just gets all the food out that's yeah, so some people are blessed that they have very, very, very tight teeth um, and, and they have little access for the bacteria to get in. Most people are like me, that their teeth aren't tight enough to prevent that from happening. So it's to get not only the food out, but it's also to get that biofilm that can form in between your teeth. It's to get that out. That's why the hygienist always says with floss, try to get really up in the gum line so that you can remove that that biofilm. And if you don't remove the biofilm, you'll get the gingival inflammation, you'll get the interdental caries, you'll get all those other problems that'll just be in between the teeth. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, that's, that's all the questions I, I think I, I have to ask. Well, but it was, I learned a lot. So thank you very much for that. Okay, no problem. Thanks for listening. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. So if anyone has a question for LaTanya, you can go to uh, the website, www.mentorproject.org and click the Ask a Mentor button. LaTanya is a mentor and we'll be happy to get your questions to her. So thank you very much today, LaTanya. Okay, thanks for inviting me, Deborah. Everyone stay well. Everyone stay well. <laughs>